Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. A neighbor asked me to help him cut down his apricot tree, so I salvaged the wood. And today I think I'll tackle this hunk of uh, apricot. And uh, previously I sawed it up into small hunks and waxed the uh, cut edges. And uh, I made myself a disc with uh, one inch circles on it so that I could try and find the optimum center. So here we go. This is a very heavy piece of, uh, of apricot. It's very green and very, very wet. Uh, I noticed later on as I turned it the, from the centrifugal force uh, going on that actually threw, drew water out to the outside and I could actually feel, uh, feel the water, not just damp, but the water on it. The, I am using the uh, shield from the lathe at this point it, since it is so heavy. Uh, it's mounted on a screw chuck and I brought up the tailstock, but I certainly wouldn't want to take uh, any chance with that piece of, uh, of heavy wood coming off and flying up and potentially hitting me in the face. It would ruin my day. So the shield is down and the tailstock is up and I'll keep it there until it's round. But uh, it's fairly easy now to uh, tool off the uh, bark and uh, a lot of the sap wood here and starting to get to the point where I can find the bevel and uh, really ride the bevel on out and uh, smooth it out, round it out. There's a little concern there because there's some bark uh, between I think the uh, two upper limbs uh, going out that uh, is a little bit more than I counted on and I'll be turning that out and showing up there pretty good. But uh, I, I've used a tailstock now nearly all the time when I'm using the screw chuck uh, with a big piece of wood. I've had them uh, just with the force and all loosen on the screw chuck and I do want to keep it, keep it sound and safe on there. But now it's round, uh, very little varying variance on there's a little bit more I'm turning off there but uh, I can get rid of the uh, general shield will keep the keep the tail sock in place there for a little bit more it's really nice to find the bevel it's a little bit rough still because of the bark inclusion but it's uh, it's coming off now and uh, looking very nice you can see some of the figures starting to just pop right on out and it's when you really enjoy making the bulls when you see see the figures start to pop right on out at you uh, reducing the the uh, sap wood and the tailstock a little bit more and then replacing the, the tailstock. Now I'll uh, turn the tannin. I'll be using a, uh, a uh, chuck, scoot, a uh, jawed chuck, but I need to uh, have a tenon on the bottom to, uh, to hold it. So I'm starting to shape that off now. True it up with a uh, skew. So it'll match the dovetails on the jaws. And then just clean up the bottom just a little bit more to make sure it's a little bit more flat. It wasn't quite there. And then just a little bit more on the outside to uh, get out that bark and, and get it to the point where I can comfortable turning it around and, and uh, hollowing out the inside. Just a little bit more to check for that bark. get it all nice and round and but rough shape now this is green wood it's very damp and very very wet and uh, I'm going to leave it, leave it very thick uh, I'm on the high side of the general three-quarter to of an inch to an inch I'll probably leave it a little bit more because I do want to be able to do it but here in the meantime you can start to see the green pop out so there's the uh, jot chuck mounted on it. You can see some of the green on the top side. I think in a minute you'll be able to see it even better once the, uh, the uh, top of the bowl is cleaned up a little bit. There's some pretty rough marks from the chainsaw and such. Uh, but you'll start to see the green, the uh, two limbs coming out and the main, main trunk coming in. And the hole in the middle is left from the uh, screw chuck that was initially mounted on. Just 
chewing up the uh, the top just a little bit more until uh, until we can start hollowing it. Yeah, the figure is beautiful. Start the hollowing process. Point where you takes some practice. I, I'm still perfecting it to uh, find the bevel, be able to write it in. And when I stop it, I can feel the moisture uh, just being brought out to the surface of the wood. It's only been uh, cut about uh, three or four weeks, and I sawed it up in small hunks, split it in half, and waxed it good, but it's been stored outside in the rain and, and has had no, actually no, no drying time whatsoever. But it's uh, nice to have the uh, chance to make some nice shavings. The green wood comes off very, very nice, although it does. In this case, the apricot smelled up, smelled up the shop and house quite a bit, but it was a pleasant smell, so it wasn't too bad. Stop occasionally and check, to, uh, check the wall thickness. Again, I'll leave it a little bit on the thick side. And uh, when it's all done, I'll coat it with a wax emulsion and put it in a paper bag. And uh, pull it out and weigh it periodically. When I'm done, I'll weigh, I weight it. When I finished it, I weighed it. It was at, uh, I believe it was 1,709 grams. And I'll use that as the benchmark and weigh it periodically until it stops losing weight. And at that time, I'll remount it in the chuck and, uh, and turn it down. Now, it's interesting with this crotch that there was another branch that's uh, being revealed as I hollow out the inside. And, and you can see it when it stops, but uh, it's another small branch that was totally hidden within the tree. And it's being revealed. So we'll see how that finishes out once it's dry. The downside to turning green is that there's no instant gratification. It will take a number of months to actually dry out enough to want to do the finished turning on that. But it is a beautiful figure coming out. And uh, it, it'll be a nice bowl when it's done. Just uh, that other branch that's sticking into the bottom will. It's not visible from the outside of the bowl, but it's definitely there. Uh, the uh, tree grew out over the branch that was cut out. So we'll see how it turns out.